Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the MTAR. It's back in Battlefield 4 from Battlefield 3. It now comes in tan. It still looks awesome if you like that sort of futuristic bullpup design. Very cool gun from Israel. And if you remember the MTAR from BF3, you'll know that it had a ridiculous rate of fire, as does the new one in Battlefield 4. This thing can drop people so incredibly fast. It's, uh, it's a really impressive weapon. Now it's not going to hold up at long range engagements as it shouldn't. Really any weapon with this kind of rate of fire is going to have to sacrifice some form of accuracy to do so. But for medium to close quarters this thing is an absolute beast. It also seems to have pretty darn good hip fire accuracy. Now again I don't have stats yet to go on, uh, Simthic hasn't yet updated with the new weapon stats, but I can tell you from just having played the game enough, having used this weapon enough, I've gotten over 100 kills with it, uh, that the hip fire is pretty darn decent and no matter what you put on this gun you're just not going to really be able to tame it for long range accuracy. And I'm taking the Burst Fire 93R pistol out for a spin as well. It's a fun little pistol, I'm liking the pistol progressions, it takes a while to unlock them. Uh, so you get very familiar with each one along the way. Here I'm playing Operation Locker, which is probably the best map you can use the MTAR on. This thing, medium to short range, crazy high rate of fire, I'm thinking around probably 900 rounds per minute, although that's not a stat yet in the game, but we'll find out once the stats come out. It just tears people a new one, looks like it's doing 25 damage maximum, so it's simply going to out damage a lot of the assault rifles you run into. The reload time seems to be decent. It's not incredibly fast, but it's also not incredibly long. When you throw a laser pointer on here, it's going to improve that hip fire accuracy. If you add a vertical grip or an ergo grip in addition to that, which I have right now, it's going to improve that even more. So you can run around shooting from the hip. You can side strafe. You don't have to aim down sights for most of your kills. Now in case you missed the L85A2 video yesterday, the way you unlock the M tires to get a kill with an assault rifle, get a kill with a light machine gun, get a kill with a sniper rifle, a bolt action sniper rifle, get a kill with a hand grenade all in one round. It's actually not that hard. And because the M tire is a carbine and carbines are now universal weapons, you can think about what kind of classes you want to run this with. Do you want to go support and just crazy hip fire all the time, reload and not worry about running out of ammo? Do you want to go with a recon class and try and use your motion sensors to figure out where guys are in close quarters? Those are probably some of the most useful gadgets to have when it comes to close quarter firefights. So you know exactly where people are, which corners they're hiding around. So that combination could be surprisingly lethal. Might even want to throw a suppressor on there, especially if you're playing Domination and you're running around in areas like I am right now where there's just tons and tons of corners and you just don't want to show up on that mini-map. Now one thing I've noticed that I've personally been shying away from at least on my primary weapons is that laser sight. There's a lot of fog and mist and visually obstructing things in Battlefield 4 now, a lot more than there were in Battlefield 3, and players can use it to their advantage. Smoke grenades, fog, whatever it is that sort of obstructs your vision but isn't technically cover can be very useful for sneaking through. If you've got a laser sight though, it will pop you out through those elements and I've lost a lot of firefights or I've been shot through smoke and debris and that sort of thing when I couldn't see my opponents but they were able to see that laser glint. And so I've, I've been shying away from it because I feel like it's giving me more of a disadvantage than advantage in most cases. So I was thinking, you know, what should I do to the MTAR to try and make it a good weapon since I'm not going the pure hip fire route because I'm not putting the laser sight on here. And I went with stubby grip and muzzle brake to try and tame that recoil and make uh, it more versatile. So I could actually aim down sights and deal with targets at medium, long, or uh, more of a medium range distance with this weapon. And it still hip fired incredibly well. So I felt like I really wasn't sacrificing my hip fire capabilities and I was gaining a weapon that was uh, now much more versatile. Now again, I really wish I had the stats for this gun because I would love to compare it to a weapon like the ACR. The ACR shoots at 880 rounds per minute. I imagine the MTAR is coming very close to that gun in terms of its rate of fire. So we've got two really fast, high damaging carbines that are probably going to be competing with each other for some of the most lethal carbines in close quarters. Now I've been playing around with Battlefield on console a little bit and uh, again I shy away from these crazy overpowered weapons or crazy high rate of fire weapons just because my recoil control 
really is not very good right now. So Sire 21 is like my best friend in Battlefield 4 on, on PlayStation 4 right now, just because I don't have to worry about that recoil. So maybe one day I'll be able to play PlayStation 4 Battlefield like I can on the PC, but until then I'll probably be avoiding weapons with this kind of rate of fire. Now something that's interested me ever since the M Tower became available in Battlefield back in BF3 was the existence of the Tavor. Now the M Tower stands for Micro Tavor and there's a full length version of this weapon. A longer version is the assault rifle version and I, it was around before the micro version so it would be interesting to see if DICE plans on putting the full length version of this weapon in the game as an assault rifle variant. We already have four different versions of the ace in this game and I'm pretty sure that nobody knew what an ace was until Battlefield 4 came out. I mean, who wants a modified version of the Galil anyway? Uh, the Galil was fun in Counter-Strike, I wouldn't mind seeing it in the game, but four different variants. So it seems like there might be a chance that we might may be getting more variants of weapons in this game. I would love to see the full length of Vore. Maybe the L86 back, the light machine gun version of the L85. It would be nice to see that. I was a big fan of that light machine gun from Battlefield 3, as I know a lot of other people were. The fact that the AK-74M with the wood grip and the wood stock is now in the game gives me a little bit of hope that we might be seeing some other retro guns in the game. Perhaps an AK-47, an AK-74 would be welcome, but uh, an AK-47 would be very cool and it would be the first time that we get to see it since Bad Company 2 Vietnam expansion. It also, to me, just doesn't seem to make too much sense that we have an entire Russian army and no AK-47s. So all in all, the MTAR is a great weapon. If you use it right and you use it in the right situations, either setting it up for a full on hip fire or trying to find a, a good balance between the two using the stubby grip and the muzzle brake, which will take you a while to unlock. But if you're enjoying the gun as much as I am, then you should have no problem using this gun all day and just unlocking everything for it. So as always guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video, Sniper Sunday. We're going to be getting into the L96 and talking about how the sniper mechanics have improved since the latest patch. I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.